Talk about it all here on the Jordy Colada Show. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button. You know, one thing about Jaden that I've tried to talk to him about is tightening his chin strap. Because he doesn't tighten it. So every time he gets hit, it looks like his helmet's all messed up. And it's like, oh, God, he just got rocked. For the win! Caught! It's good! LSU does it! After a fucking Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, boys! <laughs> Are what? you kidding me? Well, uh, LSU fan came and stuck his spike in my booty. <laughs> that ball was hard. Oh, oh, oh. Fan brought his two grandkids by and literally was just 30 seconds. Just wanted to say thank you for the team and the season and what you did and, and how much it means to everybody here is, is truly what makes LSU special. Yeah. Coach Kelly, we're official. Finally, I'm get telling a chance you. to meet you. Thought I had to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just there's Jordy. Money through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordy Collada Show. And Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question. I thought, my God, if Chica is offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy, fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast. No matter where we get, we love the lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordy Collada Show. Yeah. Day. Nice. Okay. Right. It's the Jordan Collada Show. Come have a good time. Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, live here from our Click Here Digital Studios on this Wednesday morning. Thanks for everybody showing up and finding us here on this Wednesday. Your boy had it yesterday. Oh, I was down and out, yeah. man. That sickness. That Florida Bama flu. Bro. It was. <laughs> it permeates. It hit me about 1.30 <laughs> yesterday morning, bro. And I mean, like, woke me up out of a dead sleep. Ooh, that's the worst one. I was in trouble. That's when I you're was in trouble. trouble. I mean, I was like staggering, kind of like shirtless, Ugh. the body ache and moaning Ugh. out. Like, uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, <laughs> girls always make fun of us too for how badly oh, we man. handle it because oh, we all do the exact same. Like, oh, uh, it's like, would you shut up in there? It's like, no. <laughs> like, I guess it's because like we're not used to being sick. Like, yeah. I, get, I I don't know if women are sick more than men, but. Women are usually a little more dramatic about their sicknesses than we are. Lil J and Kelly had it over the weekend, so Ooh. I was like... Oh, oh, you called it the... So I'm like... I, and then on Sunday, I got a little arrogant with it, you know, because they had it like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they were tangled up. I mean, like, they, they were... Bumbled. They had it bad. And so I was like staying out of the house. I was away. And by Sunday, I was like... 
I'm not getting it. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm, they got to be better. My immune system is, I mean, I'm on, I'm tight. I was like, y'all can't get to me. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm a man of steel. And I mean, like talking and I just, Tuesday morning, buddy. I mean, 1.30 hit me like a ton of bricks. And, I'm going to snort some range fit. I mean, <laughs> I probably lost 12 pounds. <laughs> I didn't even know I had it. I mean, couldn't take a sip of water and yeah. just stagger oh, it back. Uh, I mean, it was That is the worst. boys. That is the worst. It was, bad, it was the bad. But we're back now. Uh, and uh, 24 hours. It had me. I woke back up at like 2 a.m. this morning. And I mean, was kind of like... There's no way. Am I going to call it or am I going to do it? We're doing it. Uh, so, appreciate everybody who's been here. we got a lot to talk about. LSU Pro Day today. Stewie is on his way to uh, the Pro Day today. Going to be a lot of uh, Lloyd is here. Christian is here. Uh, you saw Stewie. Going to be a lot of NFL contingency on hand this morning on LSU's campus as three of the top 15, top 20 prospects in the NFL draft. I saw it at NFL.com. They rated the prospects just – Forget the position. Rated the prospects. Malik Neighbors number one yeah. in this draft. So, I mean, you're talking about uh, some of the highest of high-end players that will be on display today with Neighbors, Thomas, and, of course, Jaden Daniels, one of the top quarterbacks in this year's uh, draft. You'll see him work out today on LSU's campus. Looking forward to watching that, seeing what the return is, and just – how much interest is is going to be on LSU? This is always a cool day, man. You got word on if Malik Nibbles will run or? Uh, I, I I do not have any word on on what they will do uh, as far as the workouts concerned. I, I think people will be showing up to see some of the tests, but just to see these guys throw, yeah. run routes, timing, connection. I mean, th- this. I think is going to be a, a really good day for all these guys. I wouldn't think Brian Thomas would run again. I, Four I three three at the combine. I think you could you could kind of you know. And then they got the GPS stuff. I think that's why Malik Nevers didn't run at the combine because they have all this stuff anyway. Like they have how fast he runs. Like he doesn't have to show them again how fast he runs. They have it on tape. Him running in pads. Yeah, so it's no, like, I, I would. I would. Not I don't. Run. I don't know if he's gonna run, but I would like to see him run some routes. Yeah, because I put a little Jamar Chase, you know. Yeah, like that's what I was gonna reference. Like Jamar Chase kind of had to run because he sat out the entire year, so yeah. you had to see what he what he looked like when he came back, and it was four three eight. See ya. Like I'm exactly then, who you thought I was. Then the routes were perfect. Yeah, I did it all in a backwards hat, and you're like, okay, this kid's smooth. For Malik, like I don't know if he. It kind of just this is the way that it's. Not only the combine, but I guess pro days are trending. Marvin Harrison didn't even work out at his pro day. He didn't do anything. I I, I don't really know <clears throat> why Malik Neighbors would. I mean, I don't. Yeah, you know, I mean, you a, everything the game I anything. read, everything I hear, everybody Stuck I talk to higher. around LSU. I mean, they're like, man, he's arguably going to come off the board first yeah. at wide receiver. Uh, yeah, the, you know, what I mean, the like, latest... it's not it's not a foregone conclusion. That Marvin Harrison's going to be the top wide receiver taken. ESPN's latest mock: Malik Neighbors is first receiver off the board at six. And I mean, there is there's a lot of chatter on that. There's a lot of people asking questions on that. So if your neighbors, even to be in that discussion, you know th- this w- within this time period of the of the draft happening, I think is a win in itself. And I don't know if you'd run. I don't Draft's know if a month away. Out. Hmm? Drafts a month away. I know. So it's like, <laughs> if I was him, I pro- I'd, I'd probably tell him not to run. But because they have all these times already, but like I'd tell him probably work out, like just do the route. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine there. he'd run and yeah. and Jane's gonna throw. Yes. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I would so think- he'll run routes. Like he'll do the like Brian Thomas and Malik will run routes while he throws, and he'll put some other guys in there. But then you could go back last year. Jaden threw a pro day, so it's like. Scouts have already seen him throw in person, too. I would say it's better this year. Yeah, it, it, it probably is. But just, you know, like they've already seen but last year. He'd probably throw, just throw again just to show him, like, the the growth that he's had. Right. It's said to be the biggest pro day in LSU history. Over 125 media critics was approved wow. for an LSU release. Portions of the event will be televised on NFL Network, ESPN, and SEC Network with their supporters from those networks on site in Baton Rouge. So... I would imagine if all of that fanfare is around, LSU would have let them know that these guys aren't going to participate if you really want to be credentialed. But so this makes me think yeah. that they are. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're going to have that many people with a media, I would imagine there's going to be a ton of coaches 
all of it, they're not showing up to watch them do nothing. So I would imagine you might see. I would love to see Malik run, but like you just—I mean, you could turn on the tape. Like you turn on the tape and just watch clips of Malik Neighbors running. You know he probably runs up. Yeah, but he's not going to do anything to hurt his stock. He he's not. But like, well, he could. I mean, he, I think know? Malik knows he ain't going to go out there and run a four-five. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I mean, he knows what he can do. Yeah, he knows what he knows what they want. He knows what they're looking for. And at this point, he's got to have the best advisement counsel. Mm-hmm. in this industry that is out there. I mean, he, he is his representation, I'm not sure who it is, but I got to imagine when you're dealing with this type of prospect and things are this close, you know, just being a month away of, of happening, that we're all on the same page. Like, all we really have to do is not screw it up. I mean... You know, I mean, if you do nothing at all at this point, every mock draft in the world has him going in the top five, top six in the in 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 the yeah. in the in the draft. So, I just think Malik Neighbors is sitting in a great spot. But just showing up to watch these guys run, work out, Jaden Daniels throwing and you know run routes to one another, I think is worth the you know the price of admission. I mean, if pro days are always a cool. It's just a cool. Um, it's yeah, a cool really, vibe. It's just it's a great vibe, but it's a it, it's a it's a great uh, event to cover. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's because you get like the the current team will be there. Yeah. Like I saw James Simon, who's the you know one of the top running backs yeah, in he the was country. At history. He's uh, you know out of Calvary Baptist. He was in town, and they have him like hanging out with Jane Daniels and Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, allow him to kind of see the bright lights of this thing, and then. Today, when all of these guys are working out, like the current team is in like a kind of a barricaded off area mm-hmm. where they can sit and watch. And there's been so many examples, so many years where you would see guys just like standing there on the on the fence watching these guys work out, knowing that they're up next. Yeah. You know, I mean, I still remember Tyron Matthews standing and watching um, Patrick Peterson. Patrick Peterson. And and then, you know, watching Derek Stingley watch Jamar Chase. And, you know, on down the line of, of so many people that have come before to the current guys that you watch. And then, you know, just the, the faces that you see. I, I have – I think Mike Tomlin has made every single yeah, pro day LSU. at LSU. I mean, he's always here. I mean, I could think back to last year. We were probably, from me to you – from Bill Belichick. Yeah, Belichick like was here. Dad, that was his last season. Last know? year. I mean, it, it brings out – LSU's Pro Day brings out the the stars, the who's who of the NFL. So it's always a great day on campus. I mean, it's a great day to really show off. And, you know, obviously LSU football, the current team, the current program is using, using it uh, for um, for recruiting purposes as well, uh, which is very smart. Well, because does this, this, this team, this current team, have some NFL prospects on it? Which I'm sure the NFL right. scouts are, crying, you know, they're probably killing two birds with one stone. I mean, so you're what, on campus. Right. What can you tell me about Will Campbell? <laughs> What's going on with Deshaun Walmack? Yeah. You know, I mean. Harold Perkins. Exactly. So, um, it's it, it's going to be fun. It'll be a good day uh, for LSU. Uh, and as we said, James Simon was on campus yesterday uh, as he was uh, scheduled to be in Baton Rouge uh, from Sunday to Tuesday uh, here this week. Uh, Simon will remain on campus until Wednesday, uh, he told the uh, the Bengal Tiger staff over at ON3. Uh, Simon, as we said, is ranked the nation's number eight running back in the country, uh, and he's right outside of the top 100. He's a top uh, – He's I think he's ranked 103 uh, in the class of 2025. Um, this is Frank Wilson in the state of Louisiana recruiting running backs. You've already got Harlan Berry in the boat. You can go after James Simon now. I don't mean to, you know – talk about anybody's ranking systems, but if you could show me seven running backs that's better than James Simon in the country, I'd put my money on James Simon. It's the second time he's been on campus. I agree with you, Stewie. Um, And LSU seems to be sitting in a great spot for him and to use today to really show off and, you know, recruit at a very high level. I mean – uh, Frank Wilson will use today to really throw the, you know, he'll, he'll put his foot on the gas pedal today.
for James Simon. I, I wouldn't be surprised if something uh, around Simon pops here over the next couple of days with uh, the intensity that they are recruiting him with right now. So uh, this this should be a good day all around. You're talking about pro prospects for LSU. <coughs> The current team uh, for LSU heads Whoa up. Heads up Whoa now. Uh, and, hey now. Then the, and then the future hey of, of LSU uh, being on display as well. So uh, today's a big day. Yeah, I don't, and I don't see LSU slowing down to recruit. Because this weekend when we got the media availability, there were recruits littered all over. They had uh, the five-star <laughs> safety, Fahim Delaney. He was there. Uh, Anquan Figus, he was there. Harlan Berry. Um, Jabari Antoine, like they had commits and targets in the building, and they coaches coming up to him, talking to him, recruiters, Jordan Arsement, uh, Sherman Wilson, like those guys walking around with guys, just, you know, giving them a lay of the land, but they also let them get up close and personal with their position groups. And Fahim Delaney was locked in on the safeties. Like he's, he's probably spent 30, 40 minutes just watching the safeties go through individual watching the way Jake Olson was coaching him up and kind of talking to the recruiting guy. Like, just he was telling him, you know, what it's going to be like when he gets here. Yeah. And it's just yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a breath of fresh air to see, like, how they already have a top recruiting class, but it's not slowing down. Well, and there's no secrets. Like, you can't fake a practice no. or come into, like, a right. – because you can say everything that you want. And yeah, the, when right. you're in a different building and it's like, this is what it's going to be like, you know, you roll out the red carpet – when you're in the shit, like, this is what practice is like. Right. If you look this, then this is even better for you. Like, come on. We want so, you here. But if you if you see that practice, you're like, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, mm-hmm. that's when you can make the decision real quick of, I don't think I could. I don't know if I'm cut out to be at LSU or this is exactly what I want. Right. And then you got, like, f- like the family of current players there. So, like, you kind of get that interaction of, like, a recruit's parents and parents of current players and kind of, like, them telling them, like, this is how it is for the parent, from the parent side. So it's like – they're doing a great job of mixing everything in and putting everything towards like a one effort of like recruiting and current team and everything. Like it's it's a well oiled machine right now. That's good to hear. That class of twenty five is mm. is really shaping up to be in something uh, historically that and they you look at just on paper. Not even number one class anymore. I think USC has now jumped LSU. For the but they snagged class. like two recruits mm-hmm. over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, I'm hard pressed to not think LSU's class is the number one ranked class in the country, just with not only just Ohio looking State at the Ohio State, mm-hmm. just by looking at the, the bare bones <laughs> of it, you would imagine that that would be. I, I mean, Underwood, Moore, and Barry alone. That's, that's what are. I'm saying. Just looking at the first three names on the list, like you have the number one, number one, number one, like that feels like that would be the number one class. But you know how they, these things fluctuate. Sure, yeah, they are point. Zero zero two points behind Ohio State in like the score of recruiting classes yeah. on on three. Get the hell splitting hairs. Yeah. 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 Splitting hairs. Like, splitting hairs. I, I always sure. say take the top ten recruiting classes in the country, throw them in a bag, grab whichever one you want, and everybody wins. Right. You know what I mean? Like who knows? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're 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 really grading high schoolers here. Yeah. Um, Seventeen year old. And there's been a lot of guys that have looked the part that can't play, and a lot of guys that have no. No reason putting pads on that you're like, wow. wow. Okay. Sign him. That Lab McConkey can play, huh? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, remember Daily, we're brought to you by our friends what, over Taylor at Mays Katie's or Restaurant. Matthew? Katie's in New Orleans on Iberville Street, right in the heart of Mid-City. You can get in touch with Katie's right now. It's a great time to find him. Tournament season happening as LSU now will play UCLA. The ladies found out they will play UCLA coming up this weekend. Uh, if you're looking for a spot to watch the tournament and you're over in New Orleans, you want good food, cold beer, and great service, go see our friends over at Katie's. Katie's in Mid-City. Katie's Restaurant been around since 1984, serving up the best. they got a sister restaurant, Francesca's, which is over in Lakeview. Uh, but all the information online at katiesinmidcity.com. katiesinmidcity.com is where you can find them. So uh, LSU ladies find out that they'll be play, uh, playing UCLA. Uh, they also picked up some pretty big news o- over the weekend as Jersey Wolfenbarger, uh, one of the top players in the transfer portal, a top 10 prospect in the 2021 class, was also selected all SEC freshman in 2022 at Arkansas, uh, decided to put her name into the portal and was one of the top names on the list, pledged to LSU on Sunday night. Uh, huge pickup. 
for uh, for Kim Mulkey and the crew as recruiting keeps rolling on uh, for the Lady Tigers as they pick up uh, Wolfenbarger uh, heading into Elite Eight action, Sweet 16 action, excuse me, uh, into the UCLA game coming up this weekend. So um, it is going to uh, – should be a really good weekend of basketball uh, for, uh, for LSU – as they'll be taking on UCLA, and then a possible meetup with Iowa in this head case, Caitlin Clark. Good Lord. I mean, like, are we going to start calling her out for her antics at all? Wait, are you talking about the thing with the media? No, I mean, did you see her the other night when she scored the and one and she looked at the crowd and said, shut the bleep up? Yeah. I mean, yeah. She's, it's, like, I mean, like, hey, man, I'm all about the competitive spirit and competitive nature of it, but... I see my girl Angel Reese getting lit up for do you know for the way she that. runs up and down the floor yeah. and waving at people like are you serious like yeah. are we gonna you, you're gonna you're gonna point at Reese because she waved at the best player that she fouled out in the <laughs> mid middle of the third quarter in a game in a huge point and, and take that and ridicule that and then look at Caitlin Clark and tell her crowd at Iowa by the way I mean they're on her home floor. They're all there to see her. To sh- I mean, like, clear as day. Shut the F up. Into the ca- – and, like, it's just like, oh, well, Caitlin Clark gets – I mean, Caitlin Clark is a head case. Even her own dad has recognized, like, yeah. shut up. Like, just Calm sh- down. Just shut up. Play ball. Just play. I hope to God LSU runs into them. Yeah. I mean, if LSU can get past UCLA, who I don't even know who Iowa plays, but I mean Iowa plays Colorado. Oh wow! Yeah, Ooh. that's why. I, like, I, either way, I was talking. That's a to, tough match. <laughs> I was actually talking to Jock about this before football practice yesterday. Like, either way, I would I would like the matchup for LSU just because like you get a either a rematch of the national championship or you rematch Colorado from that game one where. It kind of pushed you around a little bit, and it, it, it just kind of got ugly, like yeah, got out of hand. Two great narratives for LSU, but I'd imagine big media. I mean, like, right. outside looking in, I'd rather play Iowa. Yeah. Like, I mean, really and truly, I mean, based on the Colorado matchup, they're much deeper. I am fully confident a combination of Flaugé, Last Tierra Poa, and Anissa Moro on Caitlin Clark – is not going to subdue her. Like, they're not going to shut her down. But it will be enough to make the players around her have to beat LSU, and I don't believe that can happen. Like, I don't I don't believe that Iowa has the supporting cast no. that when you get into Caitlin Clark and you run a defense at her that, again, not going to shut her down, but quiet her on you know, rather than her normal nights, I I, I would love LSU in that. Yeah, uh, so you gave up thirty against her in the national championship, and it felt like a a quiet thirty. Yeah, like it felt like LSU pretty much played as good as you can off of her, and that was all. I, that was Alexis Morris. I think she was tagged with defending her the entire night and was running off screens with her, was in her face for most of the night, and then still had enough in the tank to kind of take over the game in the fourth quarter, where you needed all of it from her. I don't know if LSU has that where it could be one defender that sticks with her and then still contributes on the offensive end. But if that is the matchup that you see, like you don't want to look past anybody, obviously. But I do know that the way that this tournament has played out and the way that ESPN has branded Caitlin Clark, they're going to do their damnedest to make sure that she gets as far as she can in the tournament, oh. whether that be to LSU or to a national championship. But don't think that this won't be a little bit of finagling on some sides to make sure that this thing happens because you feel like you lose a major so, star and your biggest revenue producer. Some quick stats for you. So bench points in the second round uh, for women's basketball teams in the Sweet 16. Iowa, zero. Mm-hmm. UConn, zero. Indiana, one. Notre Dame, two. LSU, three. Gonzaga, three. USC, five. Baylor, 11. Oregon State, 12. U- UCLA, 12. Texas 13, Duke 14, Colorado 15, Stanford 16, NC Colorado. State 19, S- South Carolina 51. That's bench Damn. points. Damn. Damn. Uh, I think Card- would- Cardoza must have come off the bench in that first game, or in that second game when she was suspended. Oh, yeah, she didn't play in the first quarter. But either way, like, still. Yeah, right. Either way, you're right. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a huge number. I mean, for a lot of the teams in women's basketball, it's 5-1-5. Five, five. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's your it's your best five on your on their, their best, best five. five. Yep. And LSU, to me, 
and and even against South Carolina, their top five players versus LSU's top five players. I mean, South Carolina is the closest matchup with LSU, but outside of that, I mean, for every Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark, who else out there really from a team standpoint, outside of like what I've seen, that's why Colorado makes me a little nervous, is just their depth. Like Stewie said, 15 points for Colorado off the bench through through the tournament. Um, I sh- Jamil made a good point in the chat. Uh, Cameron Brink from Stanford. She told the ref. I saw that. Fuck you. After I saw she found out. Yeah. Like, it's just. I mean, like blatantly. Like <laughs> blatantly. Nothing could, happened either. Could you imagine if Angel Reese did that? Coach. Could you imagine if Flaugé looked at the referee and said "f you" on they, the way out of the game? They'd spin that into a piece about Kim Mulkey. Oh, sure. no doubt about they'd, it. They'd spin that into Kim Mulkey can't control her team. She has too many superstars on the team. It, it would just turn into a whole anarchy media, in Baton Rouge. Yeah, a whole media frenzy about LSU player cursing out the referee. And, Classless. And just like we talked about earlier this week, when we're you know to, to your point, which you were talking about with Caitlin Clark about keeping her in the tournament, and keeping her alive. We made the we we made the remarks on Monday that you know officiating huh. is horrific at all levels and i'm official right like i'm not one of cast stones and i i respect all in the trade and everybody who does it it's just a very inconsistent operation right i mean it's just tough to find consistency uh we'll talk about some of the rule changes the nfl made yesterday Did you see that how are they gonna play football anymore i mean how, how do you play football anymore? see the, the, the drop but, tackle but, thing but real quick but real quick on caitlin clark because we were talking about in a world that officiating is tough to come by and find consistency in it. Women's college basketball is on another level of how bad it is. How bad was that West Virginia Iowa game officiated the other night? I want to say if I was West Virginia, I mean that was the Sacramento Kings Los Angeles Lakers <laughs> 2002 game 7 of hey, whatever we got to do, the Lakers are advancing. Caitlin Clark is advancing. I mean I think West they Virginia had, outplayed them. Yeah, I think they only had like three free throw attempts or something like that. It was some. It was a crazy discrepancy between the free throws that Iowa took and the free throws that West Virginia took. West Virginia was called for twenty seven fouls compared to Iowa's eleven. The free the free throw disparity is hard to turn a blind eye to, considering Iowa had thirty attempts to West Virginia's five. Five. I mean, <laughs> coach. If that's and I know. Not, th- I know that that's I, not a phone call from coming upstairs saying, "Hey, I, will I don't win. care what happens today." <laughs> Iowa is winning the I game. I don't give a piss about nothing. No, but, the, the, but the Clarks. <laughs> but the Hawkeyes. But the Hawkeyes. I know that – I think there was a – like it kind of – the stats get a little bit blown out of proportion because West Virginia started fouling really early in the fourth mm. to try to – Either can, way. Either way. Yeah. But that's where some of it comes from. But 30-5 to five is tough. And even Damian Lillard said, I feel like West Virginia's women's team I saw that. getting did bad by these refs like she, during the game. It was. I mean, it was – like when you the got job a, was in. Right. When you like, got NBA players talking about it, it is. I mean, it was you, – you could feel it. I mean, the, the it was like, okay. Or maybe some referees. West Virginia's got to have to beat six people, seven people on the floor <laughs> uh-huh. tonight. It's yeah. not just – it's not 5-1-5. It's 5-1-8. Maybe the refs got a little coin on the game, Coach. Well, or maybe they get a little bit of extra coin. Uh-huh. I got that Caitlin Clark when Iowa, <laughs> 35 when Iowa plus, advances. Dog. This is how that works. Heck. Um, how many did she score? But I I, oh, no. I look forward to this weekend for LSU women's basketball. If LSU can get past this weekend, I think that they'll find themselves, um, you know, squaring off against South Carolina. It'll be a crash course there. Uh, but UCLA does not intimidate me at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've never watched you. Colorado see. does. I'm just I mean, I would, I'd imagine anybody that's made it this far in the tournament, you have a. You, there's a chance you'll lose. Like, I, I, I don't take anybody lightly in terms of when you get to the Sweet 16, they all can play. So I, you just have to look at it as if it's an even playing field. I don't think that it was. It's as big, discre- as big a discrepancy as probably like the earlier round games where it, even LSU's second round game, they, they saw themselves down. Whenever they were going into half, and then you okay, you get the big third quarter, big fourth quarter, and it looks like all right, everything's good. But when you start playing, I mean, what UCLA came in third in the Pac-12. I mean, they're a two seed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you'll see. It's not going to be a, a, this isn't a walk in the park. Like I know that a lot of people look at the top, certainly like the top four seeds in women's basketball, and go chalk all the way through, and that's the easy way to do it. But LSU isn't a one seed; they're a three seed, 
And so you start looking around the bracket, and you're like, okay, these matchups are probably better than you think, but I would hope that when you look at LSU just on paper, the talent just went out. Like, I don't know. I can't tell you a player on UCLA's roster, but I can tell you LSU's. And from what I've seen, and when, they, when they're right, there's not a lot of teams that can run with them. I agree. I mean, you know, like we said, I mean, basketball at this level, as Stewie kind of spelled out the points off the bench throughout the tournament, you see that a lot of the high-end teams, really it's just a 5-1-5 sport. You know, I mean, not a lot of teams are deep. I mean, outside of, uh, again, USC, South Carolina. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I have not watched Colorado play a women's basketball game since the first game of the season. But if that same team gets off the bus, you know, saying like everybody's healthy and they have access to everybody, I mean, that, that that's could be a problem because of the depth. You know, I mean, and when LSU's got to dip in, you know, past – Five players, you know, I mean, Moro has been been pretty good. Um, it's been Flaugé. Yeah. But Flaugé's a starter. No, Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I, oh you're talking about the bench? Yeah. Yeah I, can't, yeah. I don't even know who comes off the bench. I guess Poa. Uh, and um, Del Rosario. Yeah, those are your two girls that come off the bench. Yeah. And, and for LSU, when you get to the Sweet 16 last year, right, wasn't that the Utah matchup? 66-63. Uh-huh. And so that's when it got real tight. And it felt like LSU was possibly going to lose that basketball game. And they what, missed two free throws. And LSU was able to get out of there with a win. That's when it, I'm saying that's when it gets a little bit it gets yeah. closer. Because no. you had no, it gets 73-50 win over Hawaii last year. And a 66-42 win over Michigan. And then you're like, okay, this is, gonna, this is what's going to happen. LSU steamrolling towards the natty. Then you have a three-point game that you probably should have lost. Yeah. So that's why all eyes will be on the Tigers because I think everybody wants to look ahead. You want to see LSU Iowa. You want to see LSU South Carolina again. But I think, you know, these other teams want to play too. And I don't think LSU has nearly the hatchet job that Iowa gets. It might even be going the other way in terms of who they want to see in the tournament. But LSU's, LSU is a, whether they're the big bad wolf or not, they're still a perennial major draw. And you'll probably have. The story come out the day of the game. Yeah, I'd imagine probably so. What is it? Friday. Yeah, they play Friday. Yep. No yeah. Issue? yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I do not anticipate anything in that story. Um, that <laughs> they play Saturday. That we don't already know. Like we said earlier this week, uh, I'd imagine that. Uh, you know, I've kind of heard through the grapevine that the writer has chased down Kim Mulkey's a strange dad and brother who she hasn't spoke to in a, in a long time. And, you know, I mean, every family has their differences. And if you wanted to run a story on people from finding anonymous sources or people that, you know, they, that they didn't get along with in their life, no matter how close the relationships are, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, you can write that stuff. And, and put that stuff out there. But what is it going to prove or what is it going to do or what are you going to say about Kim Mulkey that has any relevance about coaching women's basketball? And, you know, I just think that this is going to be a political hit piece that goes back to a red versus blue, a right versus left, and... You know, Kim Mulkey was 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 pretty open and 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 vocal about her feelings on on the vaccine. She's been open and vocal about her feelings on other things. And whether you agree or disagree, that's who she is. It it doesn't seem to have any pushback or, or or any type of effect on her team and I just think that that's all this is going to be is that it's going to be relatively easy to track down a new num, you know numerous amounts of people that didn't have a good experience in their in their life with Kim with Kim Mulkey and you know it was if it's 
that she didn't treat me nice while I was with her. Okay. I mean, you know, I just, I feel and assume that's what it's going to be. I mean, if it's nothing about NCAA violations, if it's nothing about a volatile workplace that's making people really feel uncomfortable to come in every day because there's some type of physical or, um, or some type of just, just some type of, uh, you know, like the intimidation factor going on. If you bring that to light, okay, I, I got, you got some type of breaking news that, that is going to affect, but I mean, if it's a, I brought my ball to the park and they wouldn't let me play. And so I had to take my ball and go home. I mean, I'm tired of those stories with all walks of life, <laughs> really. I mean, I'm so sick and tired of our society being so just soft on everything. I mean, you can't talk about anything anymore without some type of political blowback on it. You can't voice your feelings anymore. You can't give your opinion on anything anymore without being put in some type of box that outcast you from the other side and it's just it really and truly for for what we cover in sports i, I don't understand it's 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 so strange it's it's so weird in the sense of how we operate now where everything is so microscopically broken down to what people feel, say, and their stance that we have to judge an opinion and like or loathe them personally just is mind-blowing. It's, 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 and I'm not, I'm not making an excuse for Kim Mulkey. I'm sure there are people that have been a part of her program in over 30 years in coaching and probably more people in her family or personal life that she's not had good experiences with. But in the same sense, I feel like the family stuff is really none of my business. I mean, if she's coaching at LSU or she's coaching at Baylor and she's coaching at Louisiana Tech and she pissed a couple of players off, I guess I'd be interested to hear on how. Just from a human interest story, like, oh, what happened there? But would it change my feelings on whether or not I believe Kim Mulkey is successful at what she does? No. Can we argue on whether or not she's successful? Just on the ways that she's gotten there? I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know what the Washington Post is going to tell me that I relatively don't already know but also is not going to groundbreak anything that says Kim Mulkey does her job illegally or does it in an intimidating way. And outside of that, it's just a, she was mean to me a couple of times while I was playing for her. Or as a dad on why he doesn't talk to his daughter anymore. I don't really know if that's any of my business. But it's just, it's all, it's all what kind of media and that is, that, that is moving towards now. And, and that's what I expect the Mulkey piece to be. I mean, I expect it to be a textbook hate hit piece on Mulkey that is grounded on political disagreement and I still as I sit here and, and say this no Kim Mulkey personally consider her to be a friend and have no idea who she votes for at all I would assume I know I would assume to say I believe I know who she votes for but I can't factually tell you that the only reason why I would make those st those statements is because of what she did say about the vaccine. And the first day she was here at LSU, she looked at the governor of the state who she grew up with 
in Tangipahoa Parish, like was like next door neighbors with the governor and took the mask off and threw it in the air and said, I don't wear masks. So if like her opening line when you hired her, you knew who she was. That's my thing. And like I said on Monday, it's not like she's changed from the kid who was wearing pigtails playing shortstop on the boys' baseball team when she was in Ameet, Tanchapahoa, Hammond, growing up. I mean, Kim Mulkey, do, do, do we all remember Kim Mulkey and Pokey Chapman shaking hands at the Final Four when Mulkey ripped her hand back and beat LSU and was in her face and letting Pokey Chapman know that she had got her in recruiting and she had just got her on the floor. That was really my first time. I was like, who is that? Because my dad or my uncle was like, you know, she's from Louisiana. She should be at LSU. And it's the same person that's now, I guess, pissing everybody off. But it's not like she's changed. You know, I mean, I would even go as far as to say Brittany Griner in recruiting knew who she was signing up to play for. So if I hear a piece or a part of the piece that Brittany Griner didn't feel supported or wasn't supported in her sexuality, whatever it may be, whatever, I, I have no idea. I would believe that Brittany Griner didn't just learn that at Baylor. So it's, I, I don't know, I, I think it's, it's, you know, to me, she's a hell of a competitor. She's always got her basketball teams ready to play. She recruits at a high level, and she gives you a chance to win a championship. I'm in. I could care less who she votes for. I could care less what her stance is on masks, vaccines, or crime. <laughs> I have your team ready to play. Have them ready to play with good players. Check, check. Hire good coaches. Check. Give your team a chance to win a championship. Check. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Well, she was mean to a couple of players over the 35 years. I, I would expect so. I, 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 I bet she was. I'm sure she was. So, I, I don't. I mean, from my perspective, you're obviously much closer with Kim Mulkey and have developed a relationship with her. From an outsider's perspective, what you see is what you get. I don't know what you're going to dig up that's actually going to surprise you that would be like, oh, that's going to change the way that people feel about Kim Mulkey because she's very derisive in the world of college athletics and probably in the world in general. Like, you either love her or you hate her. The national media does not like Kim Mulkey. I listened to Lebertard talk about her yesterday. You have your people at Barstool that don't like her. They like even Barstool, where it seems like that would be a cultural fit, right? Like people want to cancel Barstool all the time. They don't like her. You go to Lebatard, who's like obviously has a very much of a different agenda. He doesn't like her, and so then you have but people. I hear the reasons why they don't and like her. Make, and it's like you and, don't make it. Look in your inner circle. Like if that's why you don't like people. Ask your inner circle their thoughts and opinions on things. And if they so you're telling me if I disagree with what you feel on all of our stances, I can't hang out with you and you're not gonna like me? I mean, like, I I I listen to Levitard all the time, and I listen to a lot of him because of the disagreements that I have with him. I couldn't be so polarizingly to the opposite of this. It's because what what Levitard usually does is that he, he he usually backs his arguments up and gives you some things that you're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> man. Because I, I don't I, like I, to be in the echo chamber. Of, I just listen to things that I like, and then now when I hear a different perspective, yeah. I'm like, oh no, fuck that. no, no way. That's I mean, why really Levitard kind of gives me a, a cultural gives you an open mind yes. to, to being able to talk this on a level. And really, Levitard for for me was the first guy that was really, I heard openly out loud that was pro player in this industry that I, because I was, when I first got in it, I was like asking my superiors, my bosses, my people that I work, I was like, how do I get this across? Like, how do I, I, I want, I, I'm pro player. 
You know, like I always wanted to sat, like I always wanted to be like, I, I'm on the player side. You know, I mean, I think we should pay them. And this was like over a 10 years that people were like, what? You can't say that. And I'm like, well, all right. But I mean, how do I not say it? Right. You know, and then you would go listen to Levitar. You're like, oh, okay. Well, that's how you do it. You know, I mean, he would really teach you ways within, but you listen to this and it's just really because, and it's, it's crazy. It's just because he doesn't agree with her. And, and to me, I mean, if, if we didn't like everybody we didn't agree with, you know, I mean, what makes a, what makes a party a party these days? You know what I mean? Like, what's the conversation? Bringing a collection of people together that have different backgrounds and experiences, and you telling me what's going on? And we're all like, I mean, going back and forth. I mean, that art has seemed to be lost because of everything is so intense in conversation of agreement. If you don't agree with me, then you're an outcast. When I just, it's like, man, if if you don't agree with me, I'd love to hear your perspective. Open my mind. Tell me why. Or why not? But I mean, you know, because I think we should all get vaccined and she doesn't think we should. I don't like her. Eh, you're going to have to give me a little bit more than that. I mean, you know, eh, just what else? Didn't feel like she got covered like this at Baylor either. Well, that was that was kind of that. That was it. The tip of the spear. That was kind of like the where it started. To, yeah, but coming to LSU, it seems like it's, it's gotten more polarizing. Because she's not out. A, a ba- you know, Baylor, to me, is kind of out of sight, out of mind. Like, it pops up for the Women's National College Championship, like the, the Women's National Tournament. They've had some recent success in basketball, but it's not an, an actual brand of a school. And this is no slight towards Baylor, but that everything is centrally revolving around sports. When Kim Mulkey, who ne- I'm sure Baylor never thought she would leave, leaves and goes to LSU when they win in her second year at LSU, they win a national championship. I would imagine that's like people start going, well, why'd she do that? Like, why did she leave LSU? And then it becomes this, how she did it with name, image, and likeness, and all of which was above board, but it became the show at LSU where I don't like that. And it's like, well, what don't you like? It's like, I don't like the way she coaches them. I don't like the way she dresses. And it's like, okay, what does that have to do with, like, that doesn't have anything to do with basketball. Like, you don't like them because they're good? Right. I mean, it's... it's 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 so strange. I mean, it just it really is. Somebody has to be the villain. Yeah, and, and I think that's... gladly wear the black hat. I, I think that's what. I think she embraces that. You know, what I mean, I don't, I don't think that she runs from that. Um, I just think that it's. I mean, if you spun this around and Caitlin Clark played for LSU and was acting the way that she was acting, it would not be what it is right now. It's little old Iowa, and this girl from small town. That just is putting Iowa on her back and loves basketball, and she played for the hometown team, and that's what the narrative is. Like her dad's in the stands, she's gonna be go play for Indiana Fever. Like she's all it's all Middle America right there. Yeah. If it was, she's on the number one team in the country, left Iowa to come to LSU, and is putting up forty a game, they'd be like, oh, I sacked the deck. Look at her. Look how she acts. And it's just that it's whatever narrative you want to put your spit on it because ESPN or anybody in general, really, you have to have one side over here, another side over here. Iowa is the good guys. LSU is the bad guys. Like, that's just the way the world works. And, I mean, look, this is this is Hollywood casting for LSU. Exactly. I mean, LSU has worn this. They have worn this mask and role and played this role for, for a long time now. And... Um, you know, it just ca- carries over here. I, 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 again, I expect this to come out later this week, and I don't know what you'll learn. I do know Mulkey is is locked and loaded, and I know that was part of that was really a, that was that was really Levitard's basis was the the mm-hmm. the journalism, you know, lawsuit. You know, and she can't sue. Why not? Because the Washington Post has all the lawyers behind their editorials that they're not going to. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, just so they know, I mean, it's, that, that, that's the part of this, that, you know, I mean, the free press part of it is the, is the part that's being lost in all of this, right? I mean, the freedom of press is, is what's really being lost at the heart of, of this type of journalism. And when you don't have people that can hold it accountable it's just allowed to snowball. 
Yeah, that was his greater point. I don't think it had really much to do with Kim Mulkey, but more about I think he's disappointed in the way that ger- what journalism has turned into because he's a former writer, and to see something that you grew up doing and put your passion and life into like kind of devolve in front of you where, I mean, I wouldn't say that people really trust anything that the news puts out right now because of the narrative that people can say whatever they want now with no repercussion because of social media. Like, as soon as something comes out, it's like, don't believe that, do believe that, conspiracy theory, and it's like, okay, it doesn't matter. Like, there's no real heart in whatever the truth is because people are going to form their own opinion anyway. Yeah. So I think that's what hurt him as a storyteller and somebody that probably has worked, that has definitely worked hard on stories to break news and to see it not really matter anymore. I would imagine is where his heart actually lies. Is like, oh, this is a, like it's not what I grew up loving anymore, which would stink. But it's also when you give everybody a voice, that's what's going to happen. That the the people that I guess in his mind that have earned a right to be able to speak about a subject when you research something for two years and you feel like you've done a good job and you put it out there and it's like, no, don't believe you. And it's just like, oh, okay, what's the point of all this? Yeah. So I get where he's coming from. Uh, River Daily we're brought to you by Go Roof Online at GEAUXroof.com for a brand new roof. Or if you need a roof repair, Go Roof can help you today online at GEAUXroof.com. 927-8300, 225-927-8300 is the phone number, whether it, uh, whether it is a commercial or residential roof. Uh, we can uh, Go Roof can help you out today. Get in touch with them. They will jump up on the roof, diagnose the problem, work with the insurance company, take all the headaches out of getting your new roof. And as we've told you, if you're a new listener, if you are uh, new to uh, to the show and uh, you're outside of Baton Rouge, it's all good. You're still in the area. Call them, 225-927-8300 for a trusted roofer. Uh, a beautiful roof every shingle time. Roof's up with our friends over at Go Roof. Online at GEAUXroof.com or call them 225-927-8300. All right, some stuff to get to coming up in hour two. Jacques going to join us, a part of the Southern Regional Medical phone line. As always, Jacques will be here on Wednesday. We'll ask him about uh, what's going on with LSU ladies as they get geared up for a Sweet 16 visit this weekend in Albany. I uh, will also ask him about LSU Pro Day coming up. Um, we've also got uh, LSU baseball last night taking care of Southeastern, a couple of the Headliners hitting home runs last night, including Travinsky and Tommy Tanks going deep last night. Uh, so we'll talk about that in hour two. Uh, so lots to get to. Come back with us. Jordy Collada Show, as always, built by RMB Builders. Rhett Bourgeois and the crew, remember, find them online. rmb-builders.com or on Instagram, RMB Builders. If you're looking for a custom design home, if you need any handiwork done around the office or around the the house RMB Builders is certified. Uh, they are licensed and they are ready to take your business on today. Uh, Instagram is awesome. Check them out. RMB Builders. RMB Dash Builders. Tell Rhett that you heard it right here on the show. Uh, if you need anything done, uh, or you want, if you're ready to build that dream home, uh, the custom design home, uh, Rhett's portfolio has grown so much over the last couple of years of some of the beautiful designs and construction uh, that has gone up over at RMB Builders. Let you. Uh, if you want to be next, check out online, rmb-builders.com. Uh, hour two next, Jordy Collada Show. Like, share, subscribe. Come back with us. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A-Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A-Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A-Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A-Bears Lawn Maintenance. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. 
Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good, you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy, make nope. it a good shot. Oh yeah. Sticking the roof in. For a hole in your roof, for a whole new roof, go roof. Roof, roof, go roof. Hey, Greg, roof up. 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 Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, to the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, Around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225-383-0682, Fourier Agency. Get Gordon. Gordon. And get it done. Yeah, everybody know Gordon in a 225. And he done leave with Big Four. He got Buku ties for Rice sliding, flying in a new cool ride. And every time I ride by, I see a brand new sign. I'm a Gordon. I know that he gon' get it done. Whether it's a big truck crash or a hit and run. Recovery funds, he fighting to get a ton. Mike Epps, man, we all about the Benjamin. Handling injuries, man, are you kidding me? Gordon McKernan, that champion energy. Yeah, family man with a family plan. Get Gordon, he gon' fix it like a handy man. Get Gordon. And get it done. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Roof up. Hold on. Roof up. Roof up. Roof up. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know 
what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordy Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, jordy at clickheredigital.com. Family calls family. That saying resonates even more as your family grows. And we can't seem to stop growing. Meet the newest member of the Get Gordon family, Penny's cousin Rosie. Rosie already knows, the larger your family, the more people you have to lift you up during trying times. Just like at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, we've grown to over 200 team members with over 50 local attorneys. So whether you pick Penny, employ Ellie, roll with Rosie, or get Gordon, we want to be your lawyers for life. Your lawyers for life. Phil's Oyster Bar, a staple of South Louisiana since 1945, located in South Down Shopping Center and online at philsoysterbar.com. If you log online, you can learn about the private party schedule, the catering menu, and even order online. Daily lunch specials Monday through Friday. Learn about the history when Gus Piazza took it over in the early 70s, made it an absolute stop in for everyone who came through Baton Rouge, and now Anthony, his son, carrying on the tradition. Phil's Oyster Bar, South Down Shopping Center, and online, philsoysterbar.com. Welcome back, Jordy Collada Show live here on this Wednesday morning. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe if you don't mind here. Part of the New Orleans Football Network. Remember the boys, uh, Mike Triplett and Nick Underhill, going to uh, be getting you ready for uh, the draft. I'm sure they'll have some pro day uh, feedback from LSU after today. Saints usually uh, down here in full contingency. Uh, but every Wednesday, uh, one of our favorite segments, Shock You Say, of course, WAFB 9 Sports Director. Busy time for sports right now as we've been talking a lot of stuff with LSU baseball, football, uh, LSU women's basketball taking off uh, this weekend to Albany. So uh, good to catch up with JD. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How y'all doing? Doing good. Doing Great good. time of year. You can almost like just turn off the AC right now. It if we could awesome. just. Just awesome. capture this in a bottle and keep it the rest of the year before we fry this summer. But, Windows uh, open exactly. all over the place. This is wonderful. Uh, all right, J.D., baseball last night, 8-4 winners for uh, LSU as they defeat Southeastern here. Um, two weekends of SEC baseball and 0-2 in in as far as series. the series go. Um, I, I said it's not. I'm not pushing a panic button at all. Where are you? Yeah, I really haven't watched a ton of them play. Uh, you know, I was doing the women's basketball thing this past weekend. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly I think on Sunday when Jay Johnson gets ejected from the game, that's not just about the calls. That's sure. that's frustration building up about his team and the way they're playing and everything right now. I mean, certainly I think that they went when they went to Mississippi State, the um, I think the expectation was that they were going to win two of three, and they only won one. And then they come back home in this, you know, national championship reunion, so to speak, with the Florida Gators. And uh, you get the first one on Friday, and really you're in great position to take the second one on uh, on Saturday. And the thing just takes a big left turn on you. Um, with uh, I think there was a, you know, just a real unfortunate run that Florida scored on a strikeout. Um, and then uh, Nate Ackenhausen, you know, um, 
not that he pitched poorly, but but Florida was able to get a, a big two-out base knock in the top of the ninth to tie it. And then uh, Jack Caglione, uh, I think Ben McDonald described it well. It was like a two-iron. Just, it, just, <laughs> it was. just soar, you know, didn't get right. like, didn't feel like it got higher than 15 feet off the ground and just soared out of the park. And then, you know, Sunday was a was a nightmare. So, um, you know, uh, it, it appeared that maybe Thatcher, you know, Thatcher is struggling. There's no doubt. And, um, you know, I, I've got to know Thatcher and his dad, and they're they're great people and everything. Um, certainly, it appeared maybe on Saturday, uh, Sunday too. They're they're not getting the run support either, right? It, yeah, for sure. It, it, it's a case of, you know, uh, the pitcher does well for four innings, and then the roof caves in. But along the way, the LSU offense didn't score either. So. You know, they got back on track last night, but, you know, right back into the the frying pan uh, going to Arkansas, who's the number one ranked team in the country uh, for a Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, series. I looked at the weather. It's not going to be freezing cold up there. It's going to be pretty warm, so um, so the weather will be, be fine. But, you know, tough. <laughs> Anytime you want a breather when you're struggling, you're not going to get it in the SEC. So uh, it's very early, and the goal is the goal. Win five games in the postseason to get to Omaha, and, you know, we're in March. I mean, this thing could – they could get hot and get cold again <laughs> two times on both ends yeah. of it before June. Uh, and no let up in the schedule. Number one Arkansas this weekend, as you said. So um, see anything at football that stands out? Um, we did interviews yesterday. Uh, still uh, – it's work to pull the words out of Chris Hilton Jr. Uh, uh-huh. He just doesn't he doesn't talk much. It's so funny. His mom is so animated and yeah. in the stands and everything. And uh, that was a good moment that we captured uh, after the game uh, in Tampa when he ran over to her, gave a big hug. I mean, he had a he had a nice bowl game. He had the forty three yard catch late in the game to set up the game winning score. He caught a touchdown. And so, uh, yeah. you know, with Malik Neighbors and. Um, Brian Thomas Jr. now gone. They're asking him to be more vocal and to emerge. Uh, so he was one of the guys we interviewed yesterday. Um, I think that uh, Javian uh, Taviano, Taviano uh-huh. uh, is a good interview as well. He looks like he's a pretty mature kid for his age and uh, and somebody that you want to count on in the secondary. Uh, you know, there at Saturday we were able to watch the entire practice. Um, look, Sage Ryan intercepts three passes. At, at the at the practice, good for him. But every time there's a play made, you always you start to break it down, right? It's like, well, does the defense know the plays the offense is running? So he jumps the route and whatever. Um, but, you know, I think I told you before I came on, somebody uh, on the staff said, you know, we've intercepted more passes in the last two days than we have in two years around here. So Eesh. is that propaganda? Is that just red meat? For us to, you know, everyone to get excited, like at a pep rally or something, or you know, it's probably there's probably some legitimacy to that. So Corey Raymond, um, you know, hearing from the guys, and uh, you know, they, they they're excited about being coached by him in the secondary. I think Blake Baker is a real likable guy as a defensive coordinator, brings a lot of energy, a lot of smiles, a lot of you know, positive energy there. And then uh, you know, Bo Davis, he's gonna. He's going to chew some tail and uh, <laughs> and get after some guys. And, you know, I, I think I've heard just a little secondhand information with Bo Davis talking to people and knows knows the challenge he's up against and what they have to do. And hopefully, you know, in April 15th when the portal opens and spring football is behind LSU, they can address some of those needs. But, uh, yeah, those are, those are just kind of the general things. I, it, it's so hard. You know, people ask you how do they look, and it's like, well, you're for the most part, you're watching individual drills. You're watching wide receivers run against the air. You're watching guys hit sleds. So it's kind of hard to to tell. But, uh, you know, I, I, Coach Kelly, I think what he's been kind of saying is that the sum of the parts mm-hmm. will be better than uh-huh. – Hey, we you know we don't have as many All Americans. We don't have a Heisman Trophy winner, but the sum of the parts in year three uh, may may take us past ten wins, which Garrett Nussmeyer and company have said is not good enough anymore. What do you expect to see this morning at pro day? Uh, John Eads is going to cover it for yeah. us. I got to uh, pack my bags for Albany, uh, leaving tomorrow to go to the Sweet Sixteen up there. So uh, is Jaden throwing? I don't know if we he were is. asking that in the first hour. I mean. Yeah, you know, I, I used to enjoy going to this. We used Me to go too, down Jack, to the LSU weight room yeah. and watch the guys like who could bench two twenty five the most. Yeah. Uh, and then it's, it just seems to me off the top of my head, the forty yard dash is always the event that mm-hmm. is the most significant event of the day. 
like Deion Jones, uh, maybe Duke Riley. Yep. I'm thinking of some other guys. Stingley. Stingley. Some guys Stingley who ran Stingley. like a 40 yard dash yeah. that was really, and they was like, oh, you know. Pat they, Pete. Yeah, moved up in the chart. Yeah. Um, so um, it used to be, I mean, and it was a good place to just go see a lot of famous people, too. A mm. lot of famous former players would come back, coaches and whatnot. I mean, for a while there, like, Matt Flynn was the quarterback at this. Remember they would bring Flynn back to throw at this event? Yeah. I yeah. still remember the first one I ever <laughs> didn't went to. Yeah, didn't have anybody to. else. Yeah, didn't have anybody else. The first one I ever went to was Jamarcus's. Do you remember Jamarcus's Pro Day? I mean, Todd, Vaguely. That was 2007 it would have had to be, right? 2006, The I sixth believe. season yeah, into. Seven, right. Um, but, I, I mean, Todd McShay said for the longest time it's the greatest Pro Day he's ever seen. And it was – Jamarcus and Dwayne Bowe and Craig Davis. It was kind of like you had today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first, you know, one of the first quarterbacks and two first round wide receivers. And they put on a show. I mean, like Jamarcus was rolling right, throwing back left across the field. I mean, it was just one of the most unbelievable displays of talent that you could find. And, you know, now it's turned into kind of like a who's who. I mean, as Stewie was saying, Belichick was there last year. Mike Tomlin's there every year. Yeah. Saints usually came. Peyton was always there. I mean, it was. The Ryans were always mm -hmm. Rex and Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one story off the top of my head was the guy. Uh, it was it Surreal. Gra who was the track guy? S Grayson? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Cyril, Cyril Grayson. Yeah. Yeah. Cyril he'd, Grayson. he'd run track, yeah. and, uh, and he's out there. And I think Ogeron was the coach at the time. Somebody asked about him, and Ogeron didn't, you know, yeah. didn't know who he was or <laughs> what he was doing. Track guy? Oh, 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 that boy. Well, good luck, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. And I think he might caught be a, a good player. I think he caught a touchdown against the Saints. Yeah, I think he did for Tampa at I some think, point. I think he did. I think he did. So, so that was kind of a crazy story. This guy's <laughs> never played football in college, and here he is, a uh, track guy going out for football. So um, making know, the was, team. Yeah, he was a buck, and now he's playing for the Roughnecks. So he's made a career out of it. He's in the, uh, I guess, what the USSFL now, the combined leagues. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, did, you good see for the, uh, did you see the NFL change some of these rules? Did you see what they did in the kickoff? I try. I was trying to. It was funny because uh, ESPN was showing B-roll of the XFL mm -hmm. while talking about the NFL kickoff rules. That's I, the rule they. That's the, the rule. That's they, the kick. That's the way the kickoff will be that's set the up. Rule they so the guys all stand still mm -hmm. until the receiver catches it, and then you run and down five yards apart. So the kicker will kick from like the his normal spot, thirty-five or forty. I think it's the forty now. And, and his guys have to get five guys, yards. No, his guys are, are up. Are up like on. So no offsides. <laughs> no offsides, and then. You know, I mean, I guess it kick, it keeps the play alive, but it just changes the way that it's been done. And then they prohibited the drop hip tackle rule, where you know, the like hip what, drop, the yes, hip, yeah, like where uh, I guess the 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 best example would be the Ravens tight end Mark Andrews, uh, Mark Andrews, Andrews tackle. Uh, there's some ones that go way like there's some like Kenyon Drake put out a, a tweet in 2021 talking about. How he lost his whole season because of a drop, a hip drop tackle. I mean, like you remember the DK Metcalf tackle when yeah. he chased down. That was a hip drop tackle. That was a hip drop tackle. So I mean, like I, I don't know how you're going to officiate football right now. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how it's not going to become flag football, really. And I mean, if that's the the goal, then that's what it's ultimately going to be. But I mean, I, I just don't know how you would take that tackle out of the. How do you tackle a bigger running back? I mean, like you tackle anybody if you're a. Especially like a, in a tight ends case, and you're a smaller. If you're a Tyron Matthew or one of these kind of hybrid guys that you chase him down from behind, what do you do now? Yeah, what do you do? You would, I, just run with him. I understand, just, but like, I mean, they don't teach you. How, they don't teach you to hip drop tackle when you learn how to play football. Like that's not. No, they teach you how to get him down to the ground. Yeah, but it's not like I mean, you're not like hip dropping. You're more like it's. They teach you more of like a roll. Like you roll with the player instead of like dropping all your weight back. Onto their leg. It's just dropping straight down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bo Jackson got hurt. Bo yeah. Jackson got hurt. Like he was pulled, he was sprinting from the, up the sideline. Pulled from the, it was really Bo Jackson hurting himself. The yeah. yeah, like the power that he ran with hurt him. Um, yeah, I, I always remember um, Bobby Abier telling the story just about you know flag football and this and that about how they were playing the 49ers and he got smashed after a throw and there was no flag and he got up. He told the ref, "Man, if that was Joe Montana." 
I bet you were throwing the flag. <laughs> and the ref said, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the LeBron treatment and, the, you know, the star treatment when it comes to officiating and, you know, who gets calls and whatnot, that's it's going to go on forever. Um, but, like, the Saints with the – what was the onside kick call? What was the name? Thomas Morstead. Yeah, what was the name of the uh, play? River, not, not, no, let's really. say River left. That was the, that was the draw reverse against Alabama. Uh, uh, oh, God. Ambush. 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 Yeah, yeah. Ambush. 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 Ambush uh, yeah. You lose, you, I mean, like, you lose that type of, uh, uh, you know, ability to, to, to run that play. I know there is a form of the onside kick, but, you know, it's just you the, game, the game is changing. Yes. The game is changing. Uh, Jacques, you said you're heading to Albany. Uh, right now, LSU basketball, women's basketball, feels like public enemy number one. And the Washington Post is just no, they have not. <laughs> when do you not expect yet. that to drop? I say fr- I think Friday because they'll be at the press. Well, interesting. So does this, this writer tell Pat Forty to, hey, get this <laughs> out in circulation, kind of. Circle the wagons. Circle the wagons. That's right. No one circles the wagons like, like the like LSU Pat, Tigers. Like That's Pat right. Forty. That's right. Uh, that was the Chris Berman Buffalo yeah. Bills yeah. Uh, for years. Uh, so uh, I, he said early next week. Now, um, because of the mass, mass attention this is drawn, um, you know, at Channel 9, when our reporters do stories, you know, they get them lawyered, which means they get them looked at by an attorney and make sure that, hey, we're not going to, you know, slander anybody or everything's going to be on the up and up. So I would imagine that um, the Washington Post has got this thing up and down checked and and whatnot. And I think people are right. You know, Dan Lebatard and some of these people are right in the fact that it is very hard to sue and win uh, on slander and libel and stuff like that when you're a public person like that. Now, um, I would get uh, early in the week. Today's Wednesday, so. Yep. I, I believe I'm. I'm no. Uh, Get past lunch. We're past early in the week. <laughs> I, I I would think now she's going to take to the podium in Albany, New York, on Friday. That is the media day, and then the game is Sun uh, Saturday at at noon. So I don't know if you know. Th- this is the highest amount of interest for women's basketball this time of year right now. Everyone's watching the tournament and whatnot. Kim Mulkey, as you and I have talked about. Uh, we have covered people from Joe Burrow to Leonard Fournette to Tyron Matthew to Lolo Jones. I've never seen anyone move the needle and 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 get as much interest as Kim Mulkey does mm-hmm. nationally, whether people like to hate watch or love watch or whatever uh, on, on her. So um, I, I would think that it's coming out today or tomorrow. Um, and and what is it? I mean, we we haven't even gotten excerpts from it. You know, typically when a big piece drops, it's like okay, here's a here's a couple of lines or a quote or a paragraph or something. We haven't even gotten any of that. So, um, is it about just that she's mean and she's uh, a bad person or whatever? Uh, I think that that's what this is leaning towards. I do not think I this agree. is leaning towards a, you know, she broke NCAA rules and she did this and that. I mean, I'd gotten some in, I had gotten some feedback that they had rounded rounded up players that Kim Mulkey coached like in the year 2000. <laughs> that they had gone back and found, I mean, I guess women who are literally in their 40s now, um, you know, to talk about. And, and in some cases, from what I was told, they might have been thrown off the team because they were going 100 miles per hour on the interstate or they were doing drugs or, or something like that. And you, you go round these people up and now you twist it into – you know, maybe something homophobic or racial. I don't know, but that 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 that's what this feels like to me. That's what's going to happen. Um, something along the lines of, you know, and then she was at Baylor too at a at a Christian school, and that's a complicated deal in terms of all that. So, I I, I just need it needs to come out. <laughs> the right. writer is probably. He's probably biting his feet. You know, he could be, hey, guys, it ain't going to be that big of a deal. Yeah. This thing has been blowing up a little too big, you know. I remember when Dave Letterman, the first night he went on CBS after he, he crossed over from NBC and they had promoted the hell out of it. And right. he's like, well, we could have used a little more promotion, huh, guys? You <laughs> yeah. know, like, all the pressure's on me to, like, deliver the greatest show in the history of late night. So, uh, I don't know. What do, uh, you, what do you think? The writer is Kent Babb, uh, who is also the author of – the Washington Post story that published in 2022 headlined in Baton Rouge, there's a hundred million dollar football coach and everyone else. 
where it was describing really kind of the socioeconomic factors of LSU and Brian Kelly. And uh, some people have read it. It, it. It's not really a hit piece on Brian Kelly. No, it's not. I think it's more of a hit piece on the state. Yeah. We care too much about football. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, that's, that's what I, I said uh, about it. Like, unless Bab is going to teach me anything that I don't already know, then, I mean, you know, it's just kind of business as usual. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna write a story to tell me that she has had polarizing relationships with people that she's worked with and people that have played for her, I, I feel like I know that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I feel like, I, feel like I, I I've been knowing that. I've already known that. And I mean, I, I've heard the the Griner angle. I've heard the ex player angle. I've even heard the political angle of the you know when she came out and she made the. The, the 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 comment about the vaccine at, at, at Baylor and, and even her opening line when she rap, at LSU, rips the, she, the mask off she looks right at John Bell looks right at the governor and was like I don't wear masks <laughs> right. you know I mean like the uh, the art Bri- the Bryles thing at Baylor uh, some things like that so I mean yeah, I mean it's just not everybody at LSU loves her to be honest with you uh, so there's no way you could she's no, no, too of outspoken course. of a person. She's too polarizing of a figure that everywhere she goes, she's going to either force you to eat either side. Yeah. You with me or you against me? Like, I need to know uh, up front. A lot of similarities with Saban in the fact that the fan base is euphoric. Some of the people that have to work and deal with them are exhausted. Exactly. So <laughs> that's and, – and I talked to you before. We can't, I am sometimes amazed the disconnect of some people – who demand that their teams win, and we better do this, and we better do that. And they hear something the coach says, and, wow, that was really mean. I can't believe the coach would tell that to a player. It's like, what planet do you live on? <laughs> you know, what? how do you not understand that this is high-level, high-pressure athletics, and if you're given a scholarship, you're here to perform, and if you don't, get out, right? I mean, it's kind of it, – it's the workforce. It's the real – you know, it, maybe not get out, but you got to contribute or you don't, right? And so, I mean, you know, my dad, Armiro, he always told me, you were fired from the basketball team. You did not play. You sat the bench. You know, you were fired. You know, and in the <laughs> real world, when you get a job, if you don't deliver, you're going to get fired. And so, it's kind of the same thing. So, I, I think you could round up, you know, Kenny Giot was the most beloved guy in Parkview Baptist football history. You could probably find 20 guys out there. I hate that dude, man. He yelled at me and blah, blah, blah. I mean, no, no matter what successful head coach, you can track down disgruntled players anywhere. So Great example. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, and that's exactly right. I mean, it's... Hey, y'all, Kenny Gayot. I'm sure some people <laughs> didn't like me. Yeah. You know, the best. The, yeah, rest in peace, Kenny Gayot. Rest Gayotte. in peace to the and, coach. And, and he, I, you know, and he would always talk, too, and I believed him. You know, I, I didn't take it as a line of BS when he said, I didn't get into coaching to win championships. You know, that, you know, you have to win to be successful. And all that. I got in to, <clears throat> to impact young people. And that's what coaching is supposed to be. But, of course, LSU is not the LSU you and I grew up on. Yeah. For better or worse, it's a pressure cooker, and Jay Johnson won a national championship. Um, what I don't know how many months ago? Six no. months ago. Seven <laughs> months ago. And the way he's coaching, the way he feels like right now, I, you, he probably doesn't feel that way right. <laughs> at the moment. Right. He's not thinking, "Well, I can lose today, twelve to two, because I won a national championship." No, no. He's like, you know, yeah. what have you done for me lately? And keep this thing going, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you anticipate with the women this weekend? You know, Jordan, they just need to cut. They they need to cut that chunk of the game out mm-hmm. where they go to the moon. You know, where they where <laughs> you know yeah. where like Haley Van Lith dribbles, picks up the ball, dribbles again. Angel right. misses a layup. Right. You know, right. they right. they have those stretches of play where they just what are they doing? You know, and then in the third quarter, they're like, okay, that's a national championship contender right the way the where they play in and Flage driving the hoop and hitting the threes and um, so UCLA has played a much tougher schedule than LSU, just objectively looking at it. I mean, they have played the USC's and the UConn's, and I think LSU's played three ranked teams all year. Uh, South Carolina twice and Virginia Tech once, according to LSUsports.net, what I looked at this morning. So, that does, I mean... Colorado. Colorado, Colorado that's right. Yeah. Colorado out of the shoot, so that's four, I guess. There might be another one in there, but... Um, I watched. Did you watch the game the other night? I mean, uh-huh. it wasn't like I was like, oh, frightened. Uh, no, I watched a but, little bit of it. 
Uh, a little bit of Lauren it. Betts, is that right? She's the, the, the six the seven, yeah. six seven post. Yeah. So that's going to be the big talk. Angel Reese and Lauren Betts, and then you know Moore Oak, if she can help out. This is where you really would like Samaya Smith in, oh. a, in a game like this. You know that that's that's old news, but still. And just to play that game with you, just for a little bit, real quick. If you just had one of them, if you just had Poole or Smith on this run, which by the way, I I, I don't know if you write the game. So they're, they're showing shots on the Jumbotron, and they show a shot of Kateri Poole sitting up in the stands. Before the game, it's like a year ago, it's be like the twilight zone. Why aren't you on right. the, uh-huh. the team? Why are you sitting and in the stands? And they've done that a couple of times this year. They did that at the South Carolina game. Did this they? Year. Yeah. I mean, well, uh, it's yeah. Like, it's like Mason Smith and Makai Wingo being at spring practice watching the <laughs> D-line. Like Tyron Matthew at that Washington game that night. Oh, That was brutal. That was still one of like that one hurt. It, it hurt so bad. I he, mean, he looked like the he ESPN was hurt. cameras like found him during the Tiger Walk. Remember they like had him like he was like on the side like oh man oh that was painful. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, um, I, I don't know what to I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's really this team has how we how we felt about them. You know, they could either soar or they could not do so well. I mean, I. I I have. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to come down to the end. I'm not sure who's going to win, but uh, you know, Easter Sunday, you you'll either be talking about LSU perhaps playing Caitlin Clark in Iowa to go to the Final Four, or you'll be on your way back home. So um, we'll see what happens. And uh, you know, and, and and back to the Mulkey thing too. Um, I, I thought it was a pretty big decision for her to come out and make that statement on. I did too. On Saturday, the day before your most important game I of too. the year. I did too. Now, in the locker room after the game against Middle Tennessee State, there were a couple of people that tried to ask the players, like, did you see that? Were you fired up by that? And they shut it down. You know, the chaperones, so to speak, uh-huh. were <laughs> in the room. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. said, so don't ask about that. So, yeah, th- did that impact the players or not? Is that grown-up stuff that they don't care about? I don't know. But, I, I, uh, he, and here's another qualifier that I will I will use on this is – Angel Reese is at her house after the Sunday game helping her recruit for the future. When you have your best player bought in, like Angel Reese is with Mulkey, not to mention what it looks like the relationship she has with the rest of Flaugé, Haley Van Lith, Michaela Williams, to all of her roster, that to me defines... What a good coach is, is that, yeah. you know, every year she's able to connect, she's able to communicate, she's able to motivate, teach a new age athlete. Like you said, they're going back in this piece and asking people from around early 2000s their opinion on Mulkey. That essentially is is this generation's parents. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's True. coached. She's coached generations of, of people. How do you expect not to? Well, Saturday, I went in the locker room, and I just asked them, what's it like to be coached by Kim Mulkey? I asked four of them. And, you know, the people that want Mulkey to fail are going to say, well, what would you expect him to say? Uh, you know, how could they badmouth their head coach? She's in power and whatnot. So you can't win with some of those people. Right. But, I mean, they, Anissa Morrow said, you know, uh, you can't judge a book by its cover. Uh, cover. She's the real deal. And I'm from Chicago, tough place, you know, kind of edgy place. And I, I like to be coached that way, you know. And, and Angel Reese, same thing. Haley Van Lith was more, you know, it is what it is. And you know what you're signing up for. And you have to, you know, grin and bear it. Um, who else was in there? Uh, last year, Poa. You know, I love playing for Coach Mokey, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Flage. You know, Flage last year at the Final Four. Not everybody can be coached by her, you know. So, um, that's the deal. It's like these these are her players right now, and they know what they signed up for, and they're they're they're, they're playing for. So, um, you know, should she call the reporter sleazy? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so, but she's gonna do it her way. So we 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 know that, right? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, JD, safe travels. To Albany? What's that flight like? You, uh, direct? No, uh, Baton Rouge to Atlanta, and then mm. Atlanta to uh, Albany. I mean, that's like upstate New York, huh? It's, it, it's, it's north of snowing there, right? It's north of New York City. Now, I looked at, I think the highs are in the 50s, the lows are in, the highs like 50 every day or 48, and the lows like 30-something, so I don't think it's going to snow 
it's not going to be warm, but sure. it's a 17,500-seat arena. I think the – Stewie, quick Google. I'll tip you later. Well, what's the population of Albany, New York? Oof. 120,000? Okay, 120,000? Or, or some – it's the capital of New York, but it's not – 120,000? Maybe it's maybe comparable it's, to, like – Maybe it's small. Maybe it's bigger. Is that, like, Shreveport? 98,000. 90, yeah. I, was, I, I gave it too much credit. Denim Springs. 98,670. Less than Lafayette? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 98,000, the capital of New York State. And what's what's New York City? Eight, eight nine million? Yeah. yeah eight, million. <laughs> eight million on a seven mile island. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> go, good Lord. Go uh, I've heard people say it's. it's it know, is less than Lafayette. It's not spectacular. Yeah, what's Lafayette these days? One hundred twenty-one thousand. Wow. When I was growing up, it was like a hundred. Look yeah. at Boomtown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Broussard, oh. Youngsville. Yeah, oh, yeah, Youngsville. Youngsville, coach. Youngsville's a spot, man. Blowing up. Uh, JD, uh, WAFB nine sports director on the road. You can follow all of the Sweet Sixteen and possible Elite Eight coverage uh, with LSU ladies on WAFB. And with Final Rock. Four, if yeah. they win, Final four. I ain't coming home. Really. I mean, Albany and Cleveland are like, oh golly, so why would I come? Oh man, yeah, you're yeah, two right. booming metropolises <laughs> for yeah. you, JD. We got a lot in between. Yeah, yeah, you get to kill a day or two. But LSU, they're not coming back either. Yeah, I mean, that's a big if. Sure, sure. Got to sure. win two games. Sure. But if they win two games, they're not coming back to Baton Rouge. They're going straight to Cleveland. So you'll be able to kind of follow them around. Hopefully yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, JD, the best <laughs> WFB nine sports director, and here every <laughs> Wednesday with us. Come back with us. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Colada show live here from Click Here Digital. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Hey Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make nope. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Stick in the roofing. For a hole in your roof, for a hole in your roof. Hey, Greg, roof up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshner's 
come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225-383-0682, Fourier Agency. Get Gordon. And get it done, yeah. Everybody know Gordon in a 225. And he done link with Big Four. He got Buku ties for Rice sliding, flying in a new cool ride. And every time I ride by, I see a brand new sign. I'm a Gordon. I know that he gon' get it done. Whether it's a big truck crash or a hit and run. Recovery funds, he fighting to get a ton. Mike Epps, man, we all about the Benjamin. Handling injuries, man, are you kidding me? Gordon McKernan, a champion energy. Yeah, family man with a family plan. Get Gordon, he gon' fix it like a handy Get Gordon. Gordon, Gordon. And get it done. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Roof up. Hold on. Roof up. Roof up. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Ochsner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordi Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Family calls family. That saying resonates even more as your family grows. And we can't seem to stop growing. Meet the newest member of the Get Gordon family, Penny's cousin Rosie. Rosie already knows, the larger your family, the more people you have to lift you up during trying times. Just like at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, we've grown to over 200 team members with over 50 local attorneys. So whether you pick Penny, employ Ellie, roll with Rosie, or get Gordon, we want to be your lawyers for life. Your lawyers for life. Phil's Oyster Bar, a staple of South Louisiana since 1945, located in Southdown Shopping Center and online at philsoysterbar.com. 
If you log online, you can learn about the private party schedule, the catering menu, and even order online. Daily lunch specials Monday through Friday. Learn about the history when Gus Piazza took it over in the early 70s, made it an absolute stop in for everyone who came through Baton Rouge, and now Anthony, his son, carrying on the tradition. Phil's Oyster Bar, Southdown Shopping Center, and online, philsoysterbar.com. All right, welcome back. Jordy Collada Show closing it out here live on this Wednesday. Appreciate everybody being here. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Remember, click here digital, helping you with your digital marketing plans, Google spins, social media ads, creating content, whatever we can help with. Get in touch with me, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Click here digital, helping you with uh, digital marketing plans. Been around for over 30 years right here in Baton Rouge and online at clickheredigital.com. You see this Colorado um, collective thing? No, what we got? Six to ten million dollars in a football collective. Yeah, they were talking. I was, I was hearing some people talk about this with um, how Dion's trying to do it this way, as opposed to because he was. Did you see the story where he said, "I don't, I don't know, I don't." I'm paraphrasing where he's like, "I don't have the time to do it how other coaches do it." Where if I go to IMG Academy, then I have to go to every school. Oh, he's talking about the in the in home visits. Yeah, for in home visits. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. And then so they yeah. put together this collective. So I think he's trying to do it. He'll be the first coach to build a majority through the portal. I think is what his plan is to where they yeah. come to him as opposed to him going to they, mm-hmm. which is, I guess, would work for one Interesting coach. strategy. Right, because I don't. it's almost like you're holier than thou. Like, you don't have time to go recruit. You don't have – Well, you know what I'm saying? His, it's not the, the – Nick Saban had time. Yeah, and, and like, this is this, – What's he doing? <laughs> I, 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 was, uh, my, I think he's, they signed six guys. I think Colorado should just focus on winning football games. Yeah, but you well, can't do that without give, players. Yeah. yeah, I understand that, but like, I just think that they kind of like push themselves too much into the media 
of like media scrutiny. Like they just put too much out there. Like I, I just think that they should focus on. Well, and you're gonna get winning. that with him. Yeah, I know that, but like it, I just. And then you got the comments about with Shador about the six eight quarterbacks in Texas, and it's like you go down the list, and this six eight quarterbacks in Texas do some real big things in the NFL and in college football. Like uh, Quinn Ewers and Jalen Milrow were in the same recruiting class as you, Shador. They were both in the playoff last year. You know, like kind of read the room before you say stuff. Well, I like I, that, even with the draft stuff. Like he's like, oh, I don't, I didn't go to the draft this year because I'm not gonna be the first one taken. You still got to line it up and play. I agree, and I think he is the top quarterback prospect next year. Yeah. Um, well, that, yeah, but he's trying to like direct a narrative of what of what kind of like what Caleb Williams tried to do. He's trying yeah. to do the same thing. We're like, I'm not going. Yeah. And that's just it, it, like Stewart said. I get it, but this is what you get with mm-hmm. Dion and Co. And this is they're going to have to figure out a way to be able to make this brand sustainable without his kids. Like Shadur is your best player, and then who's the uh, who's the two way guy? I'm Travis sorry. Hunter. Travis, and, Travis Hunter might be the be- best player out of all of them. No doubt. No doubt. Right. But once they're gone, they don't. You don't got any more kids. Right. Like you basically adopted Travis Hunter. Like he was over at the crib all the time, and then Shadur is, I guess, is on in line to be the best quarterback taken in next year's draft. After that, you just signed a class with seven guys in it. Like what? Do you, you're not going to put out a product that it's, goes. It's, it's, I have to go to Colorado. It's not sustainable. No, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, like I mean, you signing juniors and seniors. I, and I think he's he's banking on being somewhere after this season, or he knows he's leaving after Shador. Right. It's like he, no matter where he goes, it seems like that's his strategy. Regardless, like he has done it. Even at Jackson State, he was getting guys in the portal. So it's kind of like that's what he wants to do. He wants to use the transfer portal to build his team. And I just don't see that being a sustainable method just no. because. You're like, not going to get them. Right. You're, you're not, not going to get everybody either. every right. time. Yeah. Like, that's that's my whole thing with the portal. Like, you aren't getting the same buy-in. Like, as far as, like, with a high school kid, it's like you spend all this time recruiting this kid. You spend probably from his sophomore year to his senior year recruiting him. And giving him that time and getting to know him, and it's like with a transfer player, you only get a month, a week to get to know him, and then he's on campus, and then he's going to the NFL. It's like it's just or not doing or right not. or not even playing at all, or he's a problem for the team, and then you have to suspend him, and you just get all these little things that are just a just a really it's a real gray area for him, and I don't know how it's gonna go. Yeah, I mean this. I mean this will be the. Would I'd imagine somebody would hire him again, right? Even if he yeah. goes what wins three football games in two years at Colorado, and then Let's see what Colorado. I wonder what his buy-in is going to be after these guys leave. Right, and that, and then if he goes to like you're taking a massive chance if you're a bigger school, considering what the groundwork he's laid out in front of you, and like I said, without Shadur, without a Travis Hunter, and then you go to insert school that's what a, a bigger Power Five, I guess. And then what? Like he's not shown the ability. He's not gonna. He's not a position specific coach. He doesn't do like DB work. Yeah. Like he's more of a figurehead. Yeah. And that's well, all he, he he can teach it. But it's oh, like, that's what I'm saying. But he's got he doesn't like really move around anymore because yeah. of what it, like the surgeries that he's had. So I know he could coach it. I mean, he's one of the best defensive backs of all time. But he's also one of those guys where he falls in. Magic Johnson wasn't a very good coach. Yeah. Like I don't know how to tell you what I did. Yeah. You know, when you're that supremely athletic and that good at the sport, it doesn't translate to why like why Barry Bonds can't teach you how to hit a baseball. It's like I don't know why you can't do it. Do it what I do what I do. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't work like, that not way. Not everybody can. You're right. Yeah. You're one of one. Like that's the kind of people that whatever they get into coaching, they just are on such a different level of how good they were at the sport, they don't realize that you can be bad at it. Got a favorable schedule next year. I mean, they don't have no USC, no Stanford, no no USC, no Oregon, no Washington, huh? No Washington. I don't. They didn't play Washington last year. They played Washington State. But they had the. They played Washington the year before, but they didn't play them last year. Damn, they were in the Big Twelve too. Now they're in the Pac Twelve. No, they're in the Big Twelve now. They're back in the Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. Okay. That that starts this year. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's twenty four season. is gonna be crazy. One of those. And then you got the uh, from I think it's from December twentieth to like 
the end of NFL season, there'll be a college football playoff, NFL playoff game every day, or Hell both. Yeah. Hell yeah. I saw that uh, the NFL's playing two games on Christmas, even though it's on Tuesday this year. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah. Sorry, NBA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do the hip drop tackle. Let's worry about player safety. Let's play on Wednesday and Sunday. Yeah. Play Sunday, and then you have to play again yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, back to back it. And we've already heard how many NFL players hate playing on Thursdays. So they gotta have them a bye week. Before oh, the team's for sure. Out. But the, but yeah. the fact that it still doesn't make it's not a bye week in the same sense of Sunday right. to next Sunday. It's right. like all right, we'll play you on Monday, then you can play bye week on Wednesday. But then guess what? You have to play Sunday. Like you have to play that next Sunday. <laughs> you can't. You don't get double buys. Ugh, that's brutal. They don't care. No way. Not player safety. No, well, like hip that. drop. Player safety. We 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 banned the hip drop, coach. We, we yeah. got rid of the hip drop. Got right. rid of the wedge. Right. Players ask for grass fields. Can't do it. And they got banned hip drop tackle and new kickoff rules. The kick- and Dallas is hosting like this. I think the Cowboys are hosting in Cowboys Stadium. They're hosting like a soccer game, and they put real grass in the stadium. And NFL players are kind of outraged by it because like. You just did it. You just put real grass in a turf stadium, but we ask for real grass in all these stadiums. You won't do it, and they'll get rid of that. They'll get rid of that real grass yeah. for the NFL. Like that's yeah. just that's that was just the, for the that's like for soccer for like, soccer. Wow, golly, yeah. man. NFL dude. I I wish I had known about the new kickoff rule. I can't wait to be at a Sunday event <laughs> oh. for people that don't know. They're like what what <laughs> what's, is, what's going what on? What is this? <laughs> like oh, the NFL has changed a good bit, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, <laughs> Can't hit the quarterback. I come out of a coma and be like, what sport am I watching? Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. As always, we appreciate you being here. Make sure that uh, you come back with us tomorrow. We will not be here on Friday. No show on Friday. Uh, so make sure and catch us tomorrow. Uh, as we said, coming to you live from Click Here Digital. Like, share, subscribe. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. It's the hottest show around. We ain't got to flex. Call up G, we get it done. We earning our respect. Tell recruits to let us in. Where they going next? Throw up the L's. Now we lit. Band playing next. From the boot to the east to the west coast. No matter where we at, we live. Mic'd up for show. Open up the phone lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show. Yeah, Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Yeah. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have